Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we will be taking a look at the Rock 64 board by Pine 64. So let's get started. Now I was really excited when this board first came out on Kickstarter because it's the same footprint as a Raspberry Pi, you see? But it also includes all the stuff that the Raspberry Pi doesn't have, which is the USB 3 and the Gigabit LAN. That's kind of where it kind of starts dropping off afterwards. I'll tell you why. All right, to begin, this board has a Rock 3328, which is a 64-bit 1.5 gigahertz chip with, on this board, is the four gigs of RAM. And they also have three different models, which is the one gig of RAM for $25, the two gigs of RAM for $35, and then this, this board, the four gigs of RAM for $45. All a decent price. But here's the problem with this chip. Now, they underclocked it from 1.5 gigahertz to 1.3 gigahertz. Actually, 1.29 so in a sense it's not too much faster than Raspberry Pi 3 and I, I understand why they did that it's probably because of the passive cooling they don't want to put a heat sink on there it should last longer but if the chip itself supports 1.5 you should really allow the user to kind of adjust it however they want or put a better governor there's no easy way to change the speed on this unless you modify the kernel and change the speed or add the speeds into the kernel then compile it and install it just to get it back to 1.5 which is a lot of work for you know newcomers and everything another thing they have on this guy is the usb 3.0 which works really well when it does work okay what i mean by that is uh, I have many instances, and I'm not the only one, where the USB ports stop working. And that's almost instant when you boot up. I had that problem plenty of times with two different images. Once I stick a keyboard in there, it'll boot up all the way to login. And then once it gets to login, dead. No USB. The only way to solve that is to either use uh, DTD that they have available that you have to change with yours just to kind of keep a regulator operating or keep the regulator on or two run your own power usb then at that point you just have like a bunch of stuff just to run this little board and they know about this problem but it's still not fixed even on the latest image that i'm using and i'm using the uh minimal zental image or i forgot what the name of it is but they have a lot of images used two of them they both didn't work all right now they have the gigabit ethernet adapter which is great it works perfectly, but this board does not have Wi-Fi. That I did know when I was looking at the board, but I didn't know that it was going to be such a turnoff for me not having Wi-Fi. Now, being an IoT device and having to play with the Raspberry Pi 3 and also the Zero W and a Tinker board and all these other boards all have Wi-Fi. And it's very convenient to have Wi-Fi, especially if you're building a project out of this and you have to run a network cable. I mean, obviously you could buy a USB dongle and stick it in here, but at that point now you got another device sticking out for a USB port that doesn't really run. Yeah, going to the opposite side where the headphone jack is, great, works perfect, have audio and visual so you can stick a composite video cable on there and you should be able to get video on a regular TV, standard definition TV. On this board it doesn't have the camera, so you can't use the Raspberry Pi camera, which I really do like and they don't have. HDMI, it supports up to 4K, so that works and a barrel connector. Now, I do like barrel connectors depending on specific devices. Now, something like this that you underclock uses less power, kinda could have stayed with a micro USB cable along with all the other devices that I had, but barrel connector, I understand. Uh, they have an infrared connector in the front, the ECCM port, so you could use an ECCM flash, and then SD card underneath, and the two buttons for power and reset, and then they have a recovery button on top. Now, the Rock 3328 uh, chip supports Android, so you can actually download a Android 7.1 or something like that and stick it onto this guy and it'll run right off the bat, which is good. Same thing along with a lot of other Rock chips that you could do this with. All in all, I played around with this board for, I think, a good week. I tried to contact the company and I still haven't gotten a response. It's been two and a half months. I sent them two emails. As far as doing a review on this board, they didn't get back to me. Um, then I decided to order it myself from their website at the end of September. The total cost of this with shipping and everything came out to about $55 for the four gig board. And, and it took about two and a half months to ship. So if you're planning to get this guy as soon as possible, yeah, don't. Right now, when they, uh, I try to email them as far as when the shipping is going to be, no response. I sent them a support ticket. Took them two months to respond to me saying, oh, it's going to be shipped out in two days, which was in November or something. You know? Anyway, then after they told me that it was going to be shipped out in two days, I still had to wait another two and a half weeks before it even got to me. So, yeah. 
no rush. If you're not planning to rush for this guy, um, you could get it. Uh, just takes a while for shipping. Communication is down to zero. Like I had, I got no response. And I even told them like, I'm a YouTuber. I want to review the board, nothing. As far as this board goes, um, when you first want to load images in, they actually have their own software. They modified Etcher to support their downloading system. So it downloads images through a selection box and then you can pick whatever you want. Uh, you got a lot of images, whether you want to turn it into a media station, an Android or a full Linux distro. Uh, you could just select from the list, they'll automatically download it, then load it to the SD card. All great, everything works, until you have to reflash. What I mean by that is once you take the SD card out of this guy, stick it back in the computer, because the image is created like seven to 8,000 partitions, I'm exaggerating a little, it makes it almost impossible for you to flash the card again, unless you take another approach, which is using SD card formatter, to format the SD card just to get back the 16 gig or whatever card you put in there. So um, yeah, and it almost seems like as soon as you pop it in, 9,000 pops up saying like, nope, nope, you can't do this, you can't do that. So be mindful of that. You do need SD card formatter just to get the card back to its original state after you use their flashing software. As far as the speed test goes, so the graphic acceleration is not supported yet in the Debian images that I've been playing around with. So I wasn't able to get full speed gear XL and all that stuff working. I really did have a huge problem with the USB. I don't know if it would cut out on Android. I did not try it on Android. As far as the speed test goes, uh, you guys know my new way of benchmarking is just to mine the coin and compile it the same way as I would compile for every other across the board. So the Raspberry Pi mines XMG at 9.4 on a 64-bit operating system. I got the Tinker board over here that mines at 15.4 on the 32-bit operating system at 1.8 gigahertz. Now this guy could do 10.1 on a 64-bit operating system, which is only slightly faster than the Raspberry Pi, much slower than the Tinker board. Now due to the fact that the CPU is locked at 1.29 gigahertz, that's, that's the main reason why it's not as fast. But all in all, do I recommend, to be honest, the Wi-Fi really, turned me off. Uh, I really wish this guy had Wi-Fi. I feel that they didn't know what they wanted to do when they built this guy. Did they want it to be a desktop or more of a Raspberry Pi hobbyist project? And I think they were kind of confused where they wanted to go because they did come out with the Pine64 laptop, which was great. I never played around with it, but according to the specs and looking at it, it seems like it was a really great laptop for one of these tiny boards, but when they started creating this type of board, I think they were a little bit confused on what the hobbyists really wanted. Wi-Fi was a definite thing. I don't think we really needed the USB 3.0 unless we're turning it into some sort of server. So they could have really got rid of the 3.0 in replace of the um, Wi-Fi and also the eMMC. I mean, we could still use SD card. We could got rid of that just to get the Wi-Fi. I'm, I'm, I'm bashing on the Wi-Fi because it's so important. We're 2017. Wi-Fi. So thanks for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this board or want me to do something in particular with this board, hit up in the comments below. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and hit that little bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.